Hello and welcome to the seventh episode of the Talking Wednesday podcast. I hope this podcast finds you well. You know what? I think we had the right idea last week, recording this on a Friday and adding bits in, because currently recording these after a Sheffield Wednesday match means the blood pressure's quite high. Don't know about you. Just a little bit. I don't think the Penguin's going to see the end of the season. For the audio listeners, he's got, a, he's got a stress ball going and we all need a bit of a stress ball at the minute because Sheffield Wednesday are a little bit poor, but this is the Talkie Wednesday podcast. Yep. I am Dexterity Box. <laughs> that is uh, Punk Chef 41 joining me as always. We've got, got a lot to talk about today, uh, yeah. but before we do that, uh, I don't think we've had any new reviews this week. I haven't checked today, so none came in last night. So if you want to go and leave us nice reviews on Apple Podcasts, please do that. We will read them out in this segment every week. It just helps the show out, does all of that. Thank you all so much for your support. There's not really much housekeeping other than that this week. So we are going to jump straight into the recent matches for Sheffield Wednesday. And I think... I think... uh, Do we do this in reverse order? No, let's stay professional. We'll do this in the order they're in. Let's do this in the order they're in. So... We've played Brentford and Luton Town this week. Let's start with Brentford. Now, I did stream Brentford. I didn't stream Luton. We went back to a one-stream schedule this week just because I was really busy. And I, uh, I'm i actually glad I did <laughs> <laughs> after it all. But um, Brentford, I didn't expect anything out of that match personally. No. Um, I, actually, I'm, I, I'm breaking the system here. Yeah, you are. You've got to tell me what, what did you think of that match. Uh, that game, well, it was another team where you saw the record and they were bad form and you only need us to come in and we'll fix it for you. It's like that stupid, like, I'm, I have a little, and I've been watching a lot of Wreck-It Ralph recently. So fix it, Felix, at the minute is Sheffield Wednesday Football Club. If you're on a bad <laughs> run, send us in and we'll fix it for you. It's just poor. We, we just didn't look up for it. We looked anemic in a sense, well, in a... well the, the difference is in Brentford I said this on stream as well we were playing a really good side mm. and they weren't even at their best that nope. day you could tell and we just weren't at the races at all against Brentford and nope. I was expecting us to lose I wasn't heavily. too I was I, heavily as well yeah, yeah but I wasn't I wasn't too uh concerned about Brentford because I expected it to be that way yeah. and I was like it's you know what I can accept us losing to a good side, a really good side, um, a side that are looking for promotion, that sort of thing. The one thing that I do want to see is us at least getting a point from um, teams that are in the bottom half of the table. Yeah. You know, you've, we're in a relegation battle. We need to be doing that. However, I did <laughs> say on the last podcast, I didn't think we'd get anything out of Brentford or Luton. You did. You did. And I'm and sorry. I, I'm, I was, I'm sorry. I was naively thinking we'd get something. I would be ever the positivity of this podcast, but I'm I just had a feeling that, that by this point this week, we'd be saying this. We'd have no points out of six. Nope. And that's what happened. So yeah. let's talk about the Luton one, because the Brentford one we were expecting. The Luton one I was expecting, you weren't. That was where no. we... But I wasn't... I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting it to be that embarrassing. The first half of... Got, so I'm doing it again. <laughs> I'm breaking tradition because I'm frustrated. <laughs> Go on, punk. That first half, we were fantastic. We looked like we were teen up to a going thing. Even in my first half review I've done, I'm like, this is fantastic. We're playing well. Let's go for it. Jock Windass. Go for it. Early doors. Makes it 1-0. You're thinking, we can't keep this going, really. If when they will collapse. That's the thing about your... uh, If you've ever watched Punk's review styles, he uh, (laughs) reviews the match as it's going on and reviews it at half-time and at the end. uh, (laughs) I've not actually actually watched his one for Luton yet, but that is not going to be a fun comparison. (laughs) Uh, And then we're looking good. Winda should have technically scored a second because he guided it. He could have took it around the keeper. Then Mm -hmm. he makes it. 2-0, 2-0, and his celebration was a little bit, look at me, I can do this. It was a little bit, I've got this, I can do this. It, that could, yeah, for me, yeah, but also I was like, yes, but that could be a hat-trick if yeah, you'd have not skied exactly. the other one. But, and that's what the game was as well, missed chances. Yeah, but we had 15 shots in that, in that game, three on target. Now let's go on to the second half, because Sheffield Wednesday cannot 
string two halves of football to save their goddamn life. It's In fairness, rid- it was the other way around this week. The first half yeah. was the good half, and the uh, you know, like that's the first time yeah. that's happened. But then the second half, they get their first goal on the 50th minute, a very poor defending again by Wednesday for the corner. I think Hutch was looking for some sort of kind of free kick. He did get stood on, but it didn't really stop the goal itself. So I feel for Wildsmith because the amount of times I've watched him from a set piece, just look at the other side of his net yes. and it's in. Yeah. You know, and that's Every a big time. Bit- we don't see that happening to Westwood as often because he's he's screaming at his defence. That's mm. the one thing we are massively... We're going to talk a, bit, a little bit more about that in detail later. But yeah. we are missing deven- defensive shape completely. Yeah. That uh, second half was just a... Oh, God. But then it took them eight minutes, a whole eight minutes, for us to do a Sheffield Wednesday and make it 2-0. 2-0. And... Then after that, we, we tried going forward. We tried to get something going, but it just wasn't sticking. Mentally, we had already crumbled and we were out of it. And then 87th minute, they get their winner. And it was coming. It was coming. It, typical Sheffield Wednesday. Was it that late on? I've Because I, I sent a review for the uh, the reviews we do for different outlets. And I said it was like the 80th minute because that second half for me was just a blur of, yeah. tr- of, of crap. Yeah. You know, I was just like... I have no idea. It was, oh, I just, I am, I know the disappointed but not surprised thing is massive, but that is Sheffield Wednesday Football Club. Yeah. I was running the um, the Talking Wednesday Twitter at Talking Wed during the match. And I wasn't, I, I wasn't I getting ahead of myself. Quote, I retweeted quite a lot of what you did today as well. Because that's the thing. It was just like the first half I was saying, the defensive line's there. We need to get the second. We need to take these chances because all season we have been ruined not taking these yeah. chances. And I just hoped that two goals would be enough for it to give us that. Never me- is. The- What's worrying me even more now, like Millwall, remember we conceded th- that 4-1 game, right? Do you it's remember goal that? Di- it's the goal difference I'm worried about now. No, exactly. That wasn't too... That wasn't too... Um, that was sort of like, oh, if that's a one-off. But that has happened in the second half again yeah. now from a winning position of 2-0. What worries me is this relegation scrap we're in and we haven't even got the positive mentality from a, no. from a, from a two-goal and, ca- cushion. And they said midweek they had words after the game about stuff mm. and it stayed in dressing room. So what word do you have in this game for to get, just switch off? We do not start games well at all in second mm-hmm. halves. We if we if we're winning, it's like, oh well, all right, we've got this. And then if they score they go defensive. To be fair to Thompson, he's not one for going defensive if we are losing, he does go for it. But there isn't the play, there isn't the mental thing there. Once that goal goes in, our heads are not down as in physically, but mentally they're not there. They're gone. Yeah, I t- I'll tell you what, what gone. we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump topic. Because yeah, of definitely. today and because of this week. Later on, we were going to talk about does this team have the fight? But because uh, we're sort of like on it right now, yeah. and we're obviously from the the backlash of uh, a, a pointless week. You know, we've played two matches and we've got zero from the six. Let's yeah. talk about does this Sheffield Wednesday team have any fight in them? And we're going to look at it from a couple of different aspects. There's obviously the passion aspect, but there is the biggest thing for me is the mentality of these players. And it's yeah. been that all season. It's the if defensive it... mentality because at Luton today, I wasn't too concerned with our attack, right? So yeah. I'll give them that today. Our attack wasn't the issue. However, there has been cases where we don't have the mentality of the attack to get back into well, games. De- well, Dex, this all stems from St- Boxing Day last season, Stoke City 3 2. We've never recovered from them with it. From there, e- we've just gone downhill. It's easy to look at it like that, and I completely respect that. However, we've had three different changes of management since then. It no, still not worked. We had a yes. couple, whatever. I can't even remember now. We're, we're one of them te- clubs te- now. Te- techni- technically three, but if you count Thompson, but it's been two. Yeah, this so... Season. No, well, actually, no, it's because it went Monk, Poulis, then Thompson. Oh, so yeah, it's technically three. two changes. Yeah, 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 it's two changes. Yeah. So, um, I... Yes, we didn't... It's been a downslide since then. However, yeah. we've changed the players up and the mentality is still there. It's that weak mentality, that fragility of not being able to hold on to a lead. And 
I, as I said earlier on when we were reviewing the matches, it's I wasn't expecting much out of this week. No. Our, uh, Luton, we've not had a good result, result against Luton in a while now. No. Brentford are obviously flying high. I was I was very pessimistic the, about you know this the, week You anyway. know the only positive it's, about today was Izzy Brown looked superb. He looked yeah. like that Yesterday player Yesterday when you're watching this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> he, he looked really good and it was nice to see him play. But is that a one-off? Is that the only game we're going to see him in now? But I don't know. You, I feel like bringing Marriott and Brown on for a Luton game was a tactic. Um, mm. But we talk about fight. Let's, let's, let's separate it and let's talk about the passion we're seeing from players because that's obviously a, a fight from the club. Yeah. There's I, a few. Yeah. There's a few that I've seen, and I think we'll probably agree with this. Like, Patterson is one player that seems to wear his heart on his sleeve. I think even if we go down, he's going to be one of the players that is a fan favourite just because of the way he is. Yep. I can tell he's in this fight, yep. right? Bannon is obviously the one. He is, he is he's on that pitch, and he is. I think he's just going, why the hell have I signed this contract now? When he looks around him and he's got, he's got no... Fight no. from the the other players in that defense yeah. when he's coming back and helping the defense, and they're my main two that I see a lot from. Um, I wouldn't say I've seen well, I haven't seen Izzy Brown play and stuff. He was good today, but I haven't seen I haven't seen his attitude on it. He seems to have a good attitude on Twitter and things like that. Uh, but they're the only two players, and maybe Windass because he does get face on when things don't yeah. go his way. But I don't I don't know if that's his way or the club the team's way. Yeah. So. I'm, I'm. They're my main two. Patterson and Bannon are the only ones, and Dunkley actually as well are the ones that mm. I see that have got all the passion for the club and are actually digging in on the pitch. But that's all I can see. But in for terms me, of how many? But for me, how many of the players in this team have actually had a relegation battle? So Dunkley had it last, technically last year, and so did Windass with Wigan. When, when yeah. the. Well, Windaf when he was at Wigan before he came to us, but it's like it's 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 really hard when we've got someone like Yogidi who's there. You want him to sign a new contract, but how does he sign a new contract? The only way he signs it is that he's loyalty for taking him when he had no mm. club. That's the only way he does it. He was because, one of our best players today as well, and that's yeah. the thing. The more he performs, the less likely we are to sign him to to a new contract. And the what. It's the it's the mentality for me, mate. Yeah. We take the passion aside. You look at the fact that we've had something like sixteen games now, and out of I think it's we've we've not been able to get a single point no. from coming behind from when we've fallen behind in like fifteen, sixteen games. That is an outrageous stat. We only get our points when we are the team that takes the front foot. If we fall behind, we get nothing. And can I also say, for our first goal on today, which is Saturday, it was another one of those cases where it was a loot and mistake that we pounced on. And a lot of our goals have been that of late. Mm. There's not yeah. been something we've made to kind of go, this, we can look at it this way. There's not a lot. It's like my phone just flapped up with Twitter saying, here's the manager's reaction. I was like, mm, no, I don't really bother. I don't even want to see it at the no. minute. Right, because also, yes, I get Neil's not in an ideal situation, but he's not telling me anything I haven't already seen, and it's just always, oh, it's flat, we're leggy. Yeah. I just, I don't think this squad is a relegation-battling squad. The fact no. is, to, today, the 27th, obviously this is, I don't know if this will be break, uh, broken out or whatever. You were talking straight after the Luton match, okay? So yep. I, we had all the results going our way, and we were 2-0 up. Yep. And we bottled it. Yep. And that is not just because we were playing Luton. That is what we have done all season. Okay. Yeah. All season, we have thrown points away from goal scoring positions, uh, from winning positions. We have, we have not been able to get back into matches this, when we go behind. And that, well, and go on. Go. Well, this is the first, th this is the first time I've seen us make a load of chances, but then we don't finish them. We could have easily wrapped that game up in that first half with some of the chances. But the problem you've got is if they get one, it only takes a team to get one goal and we could be 5 nil up and we could have still lost that mm. because this team mentally are just not there. They're, but their mental side of it, it just, I don't know where, it, where, where they are. And for all the passion some of them do put in and try and get going, it just, 
if you're not there mentally, it's not going to work. No, and that's 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 the side of the squad. And and for me, the most worrying thing, right, is because if there's not a mentality to get back in a game, it's the fragility in defence that's really worrying me. Because I've said this quite a bit, but without a leader at the back, mm. and we've lost a couple of people who seem to give us some defensive stability. And, and, and a strong defensive mentality. We've lost Westwood and Iorfa. And when those two were in the side, it felt like we had a little... Well, obviously, they didn't really play to, together yeah. all so much. But like when one of them was in the side, it felt like we had something to build on. And it felt like... We know that often people say that someone like Tom Lees doesn't do well without uh, Leuven's next to him, you know? Yeah. And we just don't seem to have the shape when it comes to set pieces. And whenever we're in front, it's almost as if the players are scared that we're going to concede as much as the fans are, yeah. you know, and then it happens and it, it's stupid mistakes. But, are you, but it's you happened know, all season. But did you notice when we're ahead in a first half and it's normally the first half where we're ahead, the opposition manager just goes, I know where we need to fix it. And they fix it every time. Plan B. You just, you just Plan get B. A, yeah. You just get the way to beat Wendy. You just get crosses in our box and we fall to pieces. Yeah, no, if you just put crosses, exactly, crosses and set pieces, we cannot do anything about them. No. And it's, it's, it's basics. It's basics, composure, and just a strong defensive mentality that we just haven't got. Yeah. And I just look at, I look at the rest of the season, I don't even want to look at the rest of the season now, and I just don't see. You look at the table, we're already six points away from it, and it's, at the rate it's going, I can't see us doing it unless there's a big change somewhere. And I don't know where that change is. I don't know if that's chance here he gets someone it's, it, to, it's, till it's, the end of the season. We can't do anything with the players yet. So we need to bring somebody in potentially with, with the mentality, you know, and we'll talk, we might talk about that a little bit later on if we, we can go into depth on it. But we look at the fight, we look at, we look at what Wednesday can actually offer and it's very little at the minute. And, and how, how do you give new contract to certain players in this position? And, uh, yeah, exactly. It's you know I mean? just, I can see a lot of fans saying that we might as well just go down because there's nothing stopping it and there's nothing, there's nothing spoiling a rebuild now. And I don't know, I just, I do feel a bit beaten up by it all right now, you know, because it's not the best of times in general no. in the world and everything. And then your football club piles on top of it and your owner doesn't seem to be taking a responsibility for it at the minute. Or saying anything, and I, I haven't, the, I haven't slammed on that. To I be have, fair, we haven't heard anything. To the fact that he's so quiet worries me. Mm. It worries me that is he on the verge of selling up to someone, and he's had enough. Because all I keep hearing from Dom Housen, he said, "No, he's still in this. He's still in this." I don't want to hear it from Dom Housen. I want to hear it from my chairman. Mm. I want him to say, even if it's for a translator, and this whole kind of remote owning a club, it's not working. You need to be hands on to be able we're to. Bl do... We're blurring all our topics now because yeah, we're, we frustra we're, we're just frustrated and we've got a whole podcast plan. But obviously, this was going to be a case. There was going to be a podcast where we came on, and we can you can predict something, and it'll still work out the way you've predicted it, yeah. and it'll still anger you. And I don't think Sheffield Wednesday have got the fight to survive. Nope. At the minute, and if we, if we get I need out to see of this, something more from him. If we get out of this, it'll be luck and other teams being worse than us. But I don't see that. There's other teams around where we are who or are pulling results. Somehow, out. Chancery manages to wipe the other minus six, and even then, we might struggle. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Oh, well, so. that's the thing. Even even if we didn't have the point deduction, we're 18th, and that's still not good enough. <laughs> Let's move on because yeah. I can't. I just can't. <laughs> Right. So let's get back into some structure. We are going to talk a bit, a little bit. We're hearing early rumours. We don't have too much to substantiate this one. Um, but Adam Reach has, has potentially had talks with the club about his contract. Mm. Um, and it could be something that's in the pipeline. And maybe next week we'll have a little bit more to say on this. This is one that shocked me, right? Because Dom Housen was sort of slipped in. I don't know if he slipped, but he did talk in uh, one of the examiner pieces about him holding talks with the club. Yeah. So if that has actually happened, I'm intrigued because maybe it was just talks can be talks, right? They yeah. might have just said, 
oh yeah, I'm it not could, signing it, a new contract. <laughs> that could have been the talk, but um, it, it could it could also be the agent turn around. We're held, we're holding talks, and it could be say, taking that we're holding talk with Wednesday, or he's holding talk with someone else. You don't know. Well. I just, uh, we've said a lot that it looks like in certain matches he's been down in tools. He doesn't seem the happiest here at the minute. No. Obviously. Why would you? Um, but for me, uh, this would be the one of the biggest shocked shocks of the signings that I'd see. Unless, the only way I could see this from a financial perspective is if we were trying to offer Adam Reach a deal with a relegation clause in it and that sort mm. of, or something where we, could, we, were ju- we are just trying to, tag him on and basically say no we will let you go we just don't want to let one of our record signings go for free i don't yeah. know if if that's the sort of thing but we we wanted to talk about it because adam reach for me he can have another contract if it's if it's beneficial yeah. to the club because he is he's not the most consistent player but in the situation we are in, in. He, he does put a shift in yeah exactly and, and then- he's also got he's got a lot of technical ability and a hell of a left foot and, and the other thing you're thinking is what, he's 28 now? And yeah. if we are on a rebuild for next season, potentially in League One, in League One, he'd be a hell of a player. Personally, I want to see him drop to left back because, uh, mm, and this, yes. is no, this is no shade at him, but like people are, people seem to like Matt Penny. I'm not convinced because I watched him against Luton and I've watched him a few times and I want to know his stats for how many times he's tried to cross a ball and it's gone out for a throw. Mm. because he does and I like that don't get me wrong I like a player that looks up and tries to make something happen but going forward from that position I've seen him give away the ball a few too many times for me when we're in a relegation battle and we need to get points he always looked in a better position when I can't remember when Joss was here when he played him as a winger Mm. Maybe maybe swap him round yeah and I know that that eliminates some of uh, Reach's, Reach's but Reach can cross a ball so if we're going to play from our fullbacks, which obviously Irigidi is very good at recovery and getting yeah. on and passing the ball up, if Penny's going to do the long through balls forward and get the crosses in, we can't have half of them going out for throws. No. And that's what seems to keep happening whenever I'm watching him he play from that of, position. He did a lot of that on Saturday. On Saturday, yeah. he did a hell of a lot of that. And the matter, there were some balls he got bang on and they were perfect. The one to put uh, Windaf through was superb. And you, can talk about, and you can talk about players, oh, they need to get the mistakes out and things like that. We are not in a position for players to be no. getting mistakes out, right? If I, was, if I wanted to try it, I potentially... It depends on where Reach is at, though. But to be honest, if he doesn't want to play that position and he says, oh, I, I don't see that, I'd be like, well, you're off in a few months, mate. Just get to left back because you've, you yeah. can do a job there and get the play going that forward and try Penny on that left position. Just swap him around. If he likes to come forward... He's less of a threat then if he cuts in and if we lose it that far up, we don't have as much of an issue. Well, you know what the speculation was on the Brentford game, don't you? In the dressing room. So uh, apparently... Oh, I did hear something. So apparently Bannon and Hutch and the manager ripped into Reach and Tom Lee came out and like defended him and Reach just sat there and took it. Like just really cheaply, really quietly. So I don't know. It's a weird uh, one. We haven't spoken about this one actually. This is more. Is this more drama? Have I got another dra- uh, drama video here? Uh, maybe, so but it, 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 speculation. I don't know how true it is. Uh, is it a Twitter I, speculation? It could be. It is a Twitter speculation, but is that true? It does scream a bit of infighting behind the scenes. Well, I can't imagine it's the most harmonious dressing room at the minute <laughs> when you've no. got some players who know that they want better deals. So even if they're off, they don't want to have a relegation on their CV. Some, none, half of these players haven't been in relegation battles before, so they don't know the effects of it. I just you know, I, you know I can't I, see... You know what my biggest worry is, though? If Windows, he didn't want to do League One with Wigan. What makes him think he wants to do League One with us? Yeah, well, he's, he's got a contract, so we'll at least get a fee for him. That's um, true. But with, with Reach... We just thought we'd mention that he might be signing a new contract. We've heard rumblings, but I don't, I don't see it being likely. I'd, no. I'd be up for it, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Moving on to uh, a situation at the club that is a, an increasing worry. Yeah. And we will, uh, we will forego Westwood in this for now. We know he's got broken ribs, but we're going to talk about injuries. We've got Dawson with a knee, Iorfa with an Achilles, Van Aken's got an ankle. 
Everyone's got an ankle. <laughs> He's got an ankle injury. <laughs> <laughs> Adavaggio's got a hamstring injury. Luongo's got a knee injury. Deli Basharu, ankle injury again. Green has got an Achilles injury. Bingo! Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is... Um... We used to say this is Carlos's back team that did all of this, yeah. but... What is it? Is it our training pitch? Is it I, the fact that I, these players are soft and they don't want to play in this situation? So it's some of them are taking... To be honest, that's a bit mean. I don't think that's... <laughs> but there has been reports before that players have taken knocks and taken a few weeks off when they didn't mm. need to to get out yeah. of the, the heat a little bit. So... I think it's a bit of training pitch. Some of them are training pitches anyway. But I think... I also think it's just been... The story of our season has been unlucky at times. Like, can, can you imagine what our defense would be like if you had Iortha and say Dunkley at the back? It'd be better. But we signed Dunkley when he was injured. Yeah. Uh, Longo, we've not seen him in ages. And he was at one point, start of the season, the player of the season. He ran that midfield. We were, we were like going, he's amazing. He's doing really well. When we don't have him there, we don't look that good. I think we've just been, had a situation where we've been so unlucky with injuries. It just, it just more stuff piling on top of us. Constantly. And you see you see there what? Longo first team, uh Ajabayo first team, I offer first team, I'd say Westwood first team, and possibly I'd say Andrew uh Green's bench <laughs> and plays and is 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 rotated. Yeah. I'd say. Um Yeah, so I you've got to look at the I don't think we would be as defensively weak. Well, it's, no. it's obvious. We wouldn't be as defensively weak with Westwood and I offer in this side right now. We would, I wouldn't think we were going down. No. Right? Because we've got, you've got players, like I offer gives me confidence. Even when he plays as an anchor man, he gives me confidence, right? You know Westwood, what he's doing. Yeah, he gives me confidence in that back line. Yeah. Luongo was, was a great player for it. Deli Basharu showed promise and he showed desire and he showed the right, at- we talk about yeah. attitudes at Wednesday. He has come for more game time. He's been thr- uh, thrown through the mill with it. Ended up in the twenty threes when he was at the probably the best twenty three side in the in the yeah. world. You know, he came from Man City's academy and he's been sh- shoved into our lots twenty threes. Do you know what I mean? And we had the whole situation with Shaw where we're thinking, great, he can come in for where Shaw can't play at the minute mm. and just take that position. I mean, the, I, I, this, I can't believe I'm saying this after what I've said the past couple of weeks, but I'm like, <laughs> if Shaw's head's there. Put it. I just want anything to get us out of this now. Yeah, and I I'm know just what like, you mean. I can't. But I'm just like. I know just, what you mean. Just help us. It's, Sheff- it's ridiculous. And this is this is no slight on anyone who got it, but Sheffield went to make you very bipolar. <laughs> I just, I just can't like. I it's, can't it- process the season of. Points deductions. In, we've, we had this many injuries with a Carlos side that yeah. started to go on the decline and we blame one of the best, probably the best manager we have had in a couple of decades. Yeah. You know, and we we wanted him out for it when we look on set for relegation with an injury room that's piled up as high as that. And with you saying, Carlos, if there is a gentleman's agreement, he will not come for League One football. Oh, God, no. Can you imagine just, Carlos doing not, a League One game and just? Can you, but can you imagine League League One football with Carlson going? What's this pitch? Oh, this looks a bit. Do we play football here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Is this where you plant crops or play football? <laughs> um, oh, we, we're in for it, aren't we? As well. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about a specific injury because it ties into a player that's out of contract as well. Yeah. Well, Van Aken looks to be off, but this one He's already I said talk it going. About, yeah which is weird. Uh, but mm. Kieran Westwood has broken his ribs. Now, ribs are an interesting one. Delicious. Uh, but like, <laughs> it's, uh, I just, it's, not a good, it's not a good reference. But three to six weeks is the average time for ribs. They can take a little bit longer if you yeah. have setbacks, that sort of thing. That's and mid-April. Were, and um, they were playing with broken ribs, ribs as well. Exactly. Um, so it's probably mid-April, mm. okay. And a lot of this, you are at the real business, especially in the championship, because doesn't the championship end? Is May. it the st- start of May? Yes, I remember. Yeah, so also, there is a chance. Go remember, on. there is a game we've got to play against Swansea. That yeah, needs to be rescheduled. Well. There is a chance that we don't see Kieran Westwood 
at the club again if he has a setback mm. with his ribs. Yeah. Now, how would you feel about that? Uh, I'm slightly worried because I don't have much confidence. No offense to our two keepers, we got. I don't have much confidence with them, even in the even if we went down to League One. I really don't. While Smith on Saturday just doesn't like to come out for crosses, he stays on his line. And Dawson, I we need new keepers. If he goes, we need to invest in a proper secure keeper, but I can't see Weffel wanting to play League One when he could get another deal at a championship club. The only issue we'll have is that he's got a very long injury record now and he's slowly getting down that decline. Well, that's my... Because there'll be a lot of fans underneath this that say that um, we shouldn't be giving... His, look, it's just injury after injury with him. But I think you can't understate the organisation from Westwood. And that, for me, gets us points in itself. Yeah. Because the defence is better when he is the goalkeeper in general. So if we, for me, even with this injury, and yes, he's been out, but let's remember he was, he was out. out for bits of the season anyway. He was frozen out for bits of it anyway. So we would have probably Twice. seen half a season. Before the injury, yeah, before the, the, the yeah. knocks, we'd have possibly seen half a season for him. Yeah. You know? And we probably, we probably would be in a better position for it right now. Yeah. Definitely. Thanks, Gary. Um, but we've got, we have obviously got the younger keepers coming through. We obviously don't know about the younger keepers in the 23s, and we've got Jackson on the bench and things yeah. like that. We haven't seen much of them. Um, talks of Render, things like that. But Dawson and Wildsmith are the obvious backups. I, I'd love to see Kieran Westwood, even if we're in League One. I, I say a year for yeah. me. You give him a year, even with his injury record, for what he gives to the team and you're seeing it now as yeah. soon as he is out of the side when he's in the side we still aren't great going he forward did... and building it up but defensively we don't look like we're going to crack at any point that that game we played midweek where it started snowing could have been complete disaster if it was other keeper but he knew to turn around and told the defence just keep your shape the amount of time you hear him because there's no crowd there at the minute and we're all using iPhone you hear him shout keep your shape why are you not keeping shape and I'm being very PG on this one because he doesn't say it like that uh, and he's no, screaming he's, 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 he's screaming at players and the amount of times that you'll see him he'll go up to a player and he'll literally push them or smack them on the back of the head to go come on and I had it before where I mentioned this one before to someone. They said, that's assaulting other workplaces. They said, it's football. They don't have their own rules like normal workplaces. <laughs> but it, this whole situation, he does defend well in terms of getting a defence organised. And at corners today, every corner that uh, Saturday, when corners went in, it was one of those things where it was like, you, you have no confidence. The one time while Smith went for it, he lost it. No, he's the thing is, Wildsmith for me is if we went down to League One, I'd still like to see Westwood given a deal, but I actually feel like that's where someone like Wildsmith, it's, it's worth giving him a go and seeing how it works at that level. But if we, if we stay up by some miracle, we need either Westwood to be fit, but we need to be. Actually, if I'm looking at this realistically, if we stay up, we need somebody of Westwood's cal caliber without the injury record. Yeah. Which is not going to be... It might be a little bit more attractive next season, which is why I'm saying all these people saying we get relegated. It kind of feels like we might be a bit in a, on a bit of a reset next year if we can just cling to this yeah. league by the skin of our teeth. Because it's yeah, a it's... fresh slate. It's not minus points. It's... It's a let's try and buy some players and replace the positions. Westwood can go on a free then, and we can try and bring somebody in that's maybe a, a second or third choice at a Prem club that could do a job in this. Yeah. And, and the thing and, is, you know, Westwood go is going to want another club soon, just for his family's sake. He's got yeah. another child on the way. It, what would be even more ideal is if Westwood would agree to actually, because I would agree to have a keeper come in and do a transition phase. I don't know if he would because there's been rumours that he doesn't like to sit on the bench and that sort of stuff. No. But if, if his injury record is a thing, bring in a player that is going to be our future, our, but our near future. But then again, I think that's what we've been doing with Dawson and Wildsmith. But it I hasn't worked, so we need to no. bring in keep. Yeah. We've talked about the, the, the prime of this academy, 
But um, unless we can get a centre back that does Westwood's job, I'd love to see if Westwood stays. I'd like Westwood to stay for a year, but then him go and also do under twenty three coaching. Mm. So he's there helping. The that's the level. only thing. That's the only thing I can think. If we like offer him a coaching job and play a coach, yeah, you know, and keep him on because I think I think we've learned something. The, the the managers that say that certain players were part of the problem at this club are actually the only reason we were surviving. Yeah. The likes of Hutchinson, the likes of, of Westwood, you know, the players that were yeah. frozen out. Why do we play better with them in the squad then? You yeah. know? And for me, Westwood, try and get him as a player coach because I don't want to see him leave the club. I really want Wildsmith and Dawson to come good. But for me, but they how need many loan times deals and had... they need to... We've had this discussion too many times, yeah. Not on here. We had it with we had it with uh don't current keeper was a Wednesday player. Um mm. Ben Davis went on to have a really good career. Uh Richard O'Donnell's, I think he's now at Bradford, granted it, he's lower down, but he's gone on to have a decent career as a keeper. We don't seem to nurture young talent, even if it goalkeepers or anything, and build on it. And that's what we need to start doing. I actually, I do actually want to give a bit more credit to Wildsmith on that though, because I think Wildsmith would be a very good League One keeper. He just needs <laughs> to work on his, his, uh, his coming out for crosses and his commanding in that box. Because yeah. as a shot stopper, he's, he's quite good. He's, yeah. he's, he he's a decent, especially with the amount of shots he's had to face. He's that, one against Brentford, that one against Brentford was a fantastic save. Yeah, so little. I want to do put a little bit more credit on there, but I do still want to see Westwood as part of this. Keep one of them. Keep one of Wildsmith yeah. or Dawson. Take your pick. For me, it's Wildsmith for Same. now. Loan Dawson and see if he can come good on a loan spell. Isn't, isn't Dawson on a four-year deal? He's, I, I remember there was interest in him when he was playing for us more regularly, so he did sign a new contract, didn't he? Um, yeah. And keep Westwood as part of the setup, preferably as a player coach. Yeah, but for definitely. me, he's vital because the what what he does to our defense, it's integral at the minute, and we've yep. not got him, so that's why we're part of the reason we are in trouble. <laughs> now, <laughs> another reason. Oh God, this podcast. <laughs> it's not another a positive reason, podcast. <laughs> no, another reason why we might be in trouble is the current manager situation. Now we all wanted Neil to do well. Uh, <sighs> do Sheffield Wednesday need a new manager? Neil Thompson, if we look at win percentages, which we, me and Punk often do when we break down yeah. new managers and things like that, we're always like, let's look at someone's record. So his is currently around 40, uh, 50%. It's less than that now. It was bang on 50% yeah. before Saturday because he had 12 played, 6-1-6 six, six lost straight mm. down the middle. Now it's 6-1-7 lost. But the defeats have come in a very big sort of chunk together. And it almost seems like there's no way back up now because yeah. the capitulation at Luton is just another sign of, oh, we can go two goals up now. And this manager has not, he can, he can get us, we've played his plan A in the first half, but as soon as a team uses a plan B in the second half, we can go, we can concede three goals. Yeah. And I've been saying it all along, and you're probably sick of hearing me say it now. Neil Thompson has no plan B, and the stats show it. He yeah. cannot bring this side, and he's not the ma- he's not a manager. You know, he's our caretaker manager, which is which is why I'm sort of angry at the situation of it's on his shoulders. You look because- at who we got at the back of the staff at the minute. It's Tony Thurrock, it's Lee Bullen, it's Nicky Weaver, it's Thompson as our main lot. That's yeah. it. You need more than that. We've just not silvered a single point in the last 15 matches where we've gone behind, and that is because there is not a plan B for when we go behind. No. It is the same attacking attacking threat. We don't change the shape. We, when we've changed the shape up, it's still not worked. We it, it Basically, when you get a new team on FIFA, it's a bad analogy, and you just stick with what's there all the time, and that's it. <laughs> we, need, we need a new manager, in my opinion. Yeah, but who's going to come in? Who's no one. Take it? That's what who, I'm saying. Who's going to take it at this end of the season? We had Monk, Monk, who was seen as quite a good person in his position. We had the ultimate person, Tony Peelis, and he went. Who's going to come? Like the manager talk, like we said last week, he's dead. There is <laughs> no you imagine, talk. Can you, can you imagine if uh, uh, Steve Bruce comes back after he's sat by <laughs> Newcastle next week? <laughs> Never happened, would it? Uh, but like, it's just, we need... We need 
a, a, a tactician, and we all know it, and we can all see it. Yeah. Our ch- chairman's saying nothing about it. He's taking his time, and it just feels like we're in free fall, and Neil Thompson's going to start getting the brunt of it. I don't think anybody, to be fair, we're not even saying it's Neil Thompson's fault because they're no. like, you're the caretaker manager, mate. It's not your responsibility. Well, it is your responsibility to get results out of the squad, it, but you, were, yeah, you but, had this put upon you. Yeah, but how long was he meant to have this job? How how long was he told this is how long you're going to do for him? Kind of yeah. thing. Has he been told it till the end of the season now? Has he had talks with Chan Siri? That where it's dead. I like, said I this could... early on though, you know, when he started getting those wins and the, the, it was a good record. And even yeah. a couple of you look a couple of weeks ago on my channel, the reason I was I was prefacing stuff with like when we did the Frank Lampard talk, I yeah. said, Yes, Neil Thompson's doing really well. But I was sort of on the precipice of knowing that this was gonna change because yeah, I've seen it happen yeah. with every manager with these players. I don't know who the right appointment is. No. Because I I do. I do, technically. You need a motivator. You need somebody like Frank Lampard. You need somebody who's going to actually, even if it's just a bump, you need somebody who knows knows the game and also knows players. You need a player's manager in this situation right now. Yeah. And why, why I thought Paul Cook would have been a good shout when we looked at him. <laughs> You know what? Yeah, I I didn't think he was the most exciting to uh, idea for a uh, manager, but yeah, probably he, yeah. he 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 seemed to get the best out of Wigan, and maybe the little bump from Paul Cook would have dragged us over the line. We need to we need to do something about the manager situation, but the we're pro- not going to do it. The problem I've got now is that we've lost to Luton now, and now we have a big game this week against Rotherham. And we all remember what happened last time we played oh, Rotherham. I actually forgot for a second there. Let's just carry on powering on the misery yeah. on this uh, podcast, shall we? If, but, if, you, if you want to listen to this and be happy, don't... Just, just, have just a drink. give it a few days, yeah. Have a drink, um, ready. Who would you... Because I've already talked about it, but is there anybody on the manager horizon that you would actually see if we were to bring him in now? Now? Yeah. No. I don't know no. who would take it. I don't know who would take it. If you take someone from League One, they would be like, right, you've got to keep them up. And if you keep us up, you can have a go at championship. But they have to go down, they know League One. If you, take if, someone if you champ- look at the debate of it, though, would you say it's actually, do we need a new manager or do we need, is, or is it the players? Is it the players or the Well, it's not necessarily the manager, is it? Because it's, it's Neil Thompson has sort of had to deal with the job he's got. But... Mm. I, these play, players, who motivates these players? Because I haven't seen these players play run through a brick wall for a manager since Carlos. No, and he, and he ended up losing a few of them with with a few attitudes, apparently. Yeah, and it whoever comes in need to realize, and the players, we've had it where someone's disagreed with the manager, tried to play Billy Big, no, you think, and gone gone for it, and it's not worked, and the manager gone, you're gone. I'll see you. What we need is someone who's willing to work, have an ego, but also understand that they've got egos as well. Yeah, mm. sorry about that. Uh, but I don't know what else we can do in a sense because whoever comes in, I thought Thompson was good for four or five games and then yeah. have your manager in and then he can put it in place, have his backroom staff. The annoying thing with Monk is that he only just got his backroom staff at the start of the summer. And then they've all gone again. And it's just, it's just, the problem is there, you've got gardening leaving and you've got a churn of just players that we've, uh, staff that we've paid money for. I I don't think we're going to bring somebody in unless Chancery can put his money where his mouth is and do the right thing and actually get us a manager of calibre. I think he's just going to coast it out now. I'm going to say this now, if he, if he does do it, he needs to come out and say something. Chancery, even if it's to say what's going on, he just needs to come out and say something instead of using uh, certain journalists, in a sense, to put a message out there because we don't know anything anymore. And I'm not one for knowing every last little thing about the club. I'm not that kind of person. I No, otherwise we'd it. never be able to speculate anything on anything either and there'd be yeah. no fun in it. But we would like some transparency. Yes. And there's meant to be more transparency, but it just feels like, obviously the current world situation makes things difficult, but mm. we need to know what's going on in terms of the management plan because we, we said they were, that there was talks that he was going to take some time, but he was weighing up his options. This is a we hell are, of a long they, time. They, yeah. And if there's going to be a time, it's going to be now. And also, let's, let's, let's actually look at this as well then. 
we talk about available managers and there is specific reasons why this manager didn't want to come to Sheffield Wednesday yep. and why he'd actually go to a club that performed better than us. But Nigel Pearson has gone to Bristol City. Now, if you are a Bristol City fan watching this, uh, we are speculating on this and also sort of mildly going, this is a really good move for Bristol yeah. City because so. he, he played for Wednesday 224 times and he has a massive affinity with the fan base and the club. Yeah. But he's never managed us. Now, so many fans want this appointment and have wanted this appointment. And now he was available. We were like, why didn't he go for him? And we didn't even have... Chancery usually comes out and, and, and says it as it is in terms of throwing people under the mm. bus a bit. And I, yeah. he, didn't, he didn't even come out and say he'd approach Nigel Pearson. No. And I feel like he would be the man that would do that if he, he was like, well, I've tried. I know the fans want him. But he didn't even say that. He said he's spoken to people, but he didn't even mention Nigel Pearson. Yeah. Unless he's trying to was trying to keep him on side, but a manager with a forty percent win percentage over twenty years, especially with like forty six percent at Leicester, thirty two percent with Watford, he's got promotions on his CV. Yeah, I he's think a motivator. This, he is. That would be. I don't think Wednesday are at the caliber of of actually getting Pearson at the minute, but I wanted to see it happen because I used to I used to be like stop saying it in my chat. Because yeah. too many people would say it all the time. And I, I was used like, to say, not I, used to, I used to say it in my comments all the time, the amount of times I'd had to copy and paste something I had literally written out on a notepad in my computer just to go, I'm sick of writing this, I'm just going to book, dump, done. And if anyone doesn't understand the reason why he won't take it, he lives in Sheffield. He well, wants that's, what keep... that's, that's what he, he says. He right? does but live I in al- Sheffield. I also feel like, I also feel, he does live in Sheffield and he wants to keep that and he wants to keep the rapport there. Yeah. But I think there's a couple of things that would make Nigel Pearson not a fit for Sheffield Wednesday at the minute. And that is that it's Chancery and the rumours on the back line that he doesn't work well with that style of manager who have to have complete control. Yeah. He, doesn't want to, he doesn't want that uh, aspect, which we, is only rumours, but we've heard it from multiple people now. Would love some clarification on that from the man himself, but we will see what happens. He's only seemed to ever really have a really good working relationship with Carlos. Yeah. You know, um, whereas with Pearson as well, there was the thing about living in Sheffield. But I think actually, if we'd have been in Bristol City's position, who are currently in 12th, on the, with, an out, with, a, with a very real chance of the playoffs, in fairness to them, mm. if they can go on a run. Very much so. If we were in the position we were in a couple of years ago, before we went down the path of Joss and Monk and all of that, and Pearson had lost his job then, even though he says he doesn't want it, I feel like he'd have taken it. Mm, maybe. If we were in a more attractive position. But I also have a funny feeling that he's the kind of person doesn't like to go where he played before. He doesn't want to sully that legacy he's already got as a is player. He ever, is he ever gone to anywhere he's been I before? don't know. I, I just get the funny feeling he knows how much as a fan favourite he, he'd been in the past. Yeah. And well, have they gone uh, anywhere? He's played at Shrewsbury, Wednesday and Middlesbrough. All right. Who's he um, managed? None of them. You are right. Yeah. yeah so he's, he's managed um, Carlisle. He was West Brom's caretaker, under Engl- England under 21's caretaker, Newcastle's caretaker. Then Southampton, Leicester, Hull, Leicester, Derby. Um, he went to Lou- uh, Laven. Uh, oh, then, yeah, because that's where her went, remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then Watford and now Bristol City. And if I have said Bristol, by the way, I apologise. I know that winds you up as much as Sheffield winds us up. It yeah. might have just been a slip of the tongue. It's something I only got educated on about a year ago. So I apologise if it's still in there. I'm not doing but it I have, But I have a funny feeling. If he plays somewhere, he don't want to manage there because he's already got, and if he's done well, he's already got that re- reputation of being quite, well respected and here everyone still sees him a big legend and i'm not a big fan of managers coming back to club to manage so i'm not a big fan of I, carlos if that is the case of him coming back i think i just want to say as well this is a really good move for bristol city um, oh yeah and i think i'm really surprised they've only given it him to the end of the season I think, I think I think I think it's seeing what he can do. If he gets it, then they'll give it him. It, I'm really a, surprised though, because a manager that has got his recent record, um, mm. and and is I'm really surprised that they've managed to entice him on a short term deal because he said he wants it longer than that as well. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, Bristol City, I've always said there'd been a club recently with an outside shot of it. Yeah. He he also, he's spoken really well to press sources around there as well, saying that it's not, they'll be sick about hearing about potential and things like that. He says all the things I want a Wednesday manager to say. <laughs> However, we, he would have been the exact fit for us. We were talking about, does Sheffield Wednesday need a new manager just a few minutes ago? And yes, they do. And Nigel Pearson would have been the perfect manager. We thought we'd mention it because he's just moved. Yeah. And obviously he was available. Well done, Bristol City. Yep. And uh, I really hope we can get somebody of that calibre at some point because the situation we're in. We need just, it. We need shall, it. Shall, we need shall we just, shall we just, for definite. Shall we just do a reality TV show, which is come man, it's Sheffield Wednesday and we'll get someone to host it. I mean, at this point, guys, just give me it. We've, we've talked about it. <laughs> we were saying it on the stream. They were like, to be honest, it, yeah. can, you've got enough fee for promotions, mate. Give it you. Um, but no. Congratulations to Bristol City and Nigel manager. Pearson on that one. We thought, we'd, we thought we'd break it out with the Wednesday link. And yeah, it's, a, sh- it's, a, sh- it's a shame for us. It was never going to happen though. So nah. fair play. Okay, big topic. Big, big topic. It's one that we kept getting asked to do. I couldn't even bring the remote, uh, the amount of people that have asked us to do this topic. And thank you, because you know where the community topic is now. So great. Yeah, thank you for finding that. Um, <laughs> This is going to be a massive one, and we want all your thoughts down below. Should Chan Siri sell the club? Now, for a lot of people, that's an immediate yes. They've had enough. Yeah. Apparently, the worst owner since Alan. Ooh, saying something like that. Um, mm. But I want to give this to Jake first, because we've, we've got very similar opinions, and also we diverge a little bit. Jake did a really good video on this a little while ago. It's obviously developed a lot more now. Sheffield Wednesday looked likely mm. to get relegated and the chairman has stayed silent. Go through some of your pros and cons and what you feel the general summary should be for Chancery. Yeah, so my pros are, he's already here. Yeah, it's not worked. And he's learning though. He's learning to not have big players on big wages. So we are looking at that. He starts to communicate with fans again, but it's not as much as we want. We need to be more work with the community communication from him. Even if it's him getting a translator to help him speak to him because English isn't his first language. Because I think sometimes we can lose certain things, what he says, and take it as gospel. I don't want to talk about too much about how much money you've spent. Obviously, running a football club, it's expensive. And we also don't, don't know the exact... We don't know if no. he's exaggerating slightly as well because he does talk about putting like 350 million yeah. in. Yeah, and I could see it, but I also, I, I think it's less than that. Yeah. Let's give him credit for what he did with the staff. He could have furloughed them. He paid them all full wages and made sure people were there. And people are going to criticise and go, where's my refund for my season ticket? It's a lot of season tickets to give you money back. And with the way we do our season tickets, it's in the cons. So I'll talk about that one. And he's trying to sort it out and try and get something. And he does generally care about the club. I think. I don't think he's one of the people who he just wants to see what's what and just say, yes, he gambled in the first two seasons and it didn't pay off. And then he had to sort everything out, out with FFP, so that other clubs could do it and it just not worked for us. It's the typical remember, the Wednesday way. It's very hard in the current climate of the world to be a remote owner because that's what he's doing. If you're thinking about your doing your work remotely or you're uh, teaching, you're remote in teaching. I can't see how hard that is if you're not seeing people every day face to face. If you're doing it via a computer link or something like that and the time distance, you don't know what time he's having to be at there. I don't know if he's keeping to like Western times to keep what's going on with the club, if you know what I mean. The cons, we could have a lot worse owners than we currently got now who really don't care about the club and they just want to take us for a ride. Stockholm Syndrome bedding yeah. in right there. Yeah. Uh, DC, like I said, DC do care about the club. We could be in another Milan trying to find an owner and it takes a long time. And remember, he had one owner that was basically a fraud and he nearly went to him. It was so close for him to get in the club. And that could have been a really bad decision. We could have been yeah, in a Yeah, do you remember position. Azerbaijan land of yeah. fire? We could have been in that. a bad position there. Media has said he's here for the long term. Yes, great, that's great. But can we hear it from him instead of media? And when I say media, I actually just mean Yorkshire Zanima. He seems to have a good relationship with Dom Housen. 
he got his foot in the door. He does seem to, if you see anything, it all comes from Yorkshire's and then the star uh, picking up pizza, trying to get a link. Yeah. Well, well obviously say- that's, that's that Dom's been around for a while. So yeah. he gets the, he gets the, he gets Special the prime treatment. scoops now. Yeah. Does the day didn't go with the tail, even though he said it has, that could then put us in a position like Coventry, where the tail doesn't go with the club, and then they're having to play their game wherever. I can't see Wednesday fan being very happy about playing home games at either Sheffield United, Rotherham, or Barnsley. <laughs> he has also said, though, why would I sell the club without selling the ground? Exactly, he has said that. Yeah. And you could, in theory, get somebody that liked the club and liked it as thing. And do an NK Donson move it. Because it's So, it, so does, yeah, I, yeah, I get that. Let's just see how many people have stayed to this point of the video after you've said that he does seem to care. Yep. <laughs> and we could end up with worst owners. Okay, so they're the cons and the pros, sort of thing, and all of that. I have. S- it's weird, right? Because whatever you say on Chancery, yes, like if you're saying negative stuff, You've got that side of the fan base that says you're just looking for anything to beat Chancery with. And we have said that before as well when things have seemed like that. Yeah. And if you are negative, uh, if you are positive about him, um, you are basically, you are naive. And that is mm. the word that everybody loves to use in that. So you can't see what he's doing, all of this. And you don't want The same people also enough. that hold Milan up on a pedestal. And we will talk about Milan more in a in a future podcast, yeah. right? Because there is a lot of things that I think people forget about in the Milan ownership. You've also got to remember, Milan handed this club over to Chancery. Yeah. Please also look at what happened after Milan handed Portsmouth over and what Portsmouth are now, right? Yeah. He, you could also say Leicester, but Leicester have obviously been very good since. But then you also look, you look at Sheffield Wednesday and we are in a situation where it could have been another Milan handover success story where in the first couple mm. of seasons we looked Premier League bound. Yeah, very much so. We did. Chan Siri was an owner that came in and chucked money at it. And, and whether he was, you... He was a on. little bit bold with what he said with saying, I want us there by in two year seasons. He shouldn't have said that. He no. should have said, I want us in the Premiership. But he did. he did. He did say that and he did want that. And you yeah. could see that by bringing in a team and chucking money at it. Yeah. And it I've got to I've got to point this out and play the av- advocate because that has worked for the likes of Wolves. The teams that it hasn't worked for are the likes of Derby, right? Mm. But Derby is still getting away with it scot free somehow, right? <laughs> but like you look at Sheffield Wednesday and the the reason is the wrong players were brought in at the wrong time. But at the time, we were still two playoff seasons, right? We mm, were still yeah. at the... So even though they were the wrong players for the future, for the right now, they could have just seen us up there and got us promoted. We also think- had a bit of structure back then in terms of manager. We were keeping with the same old. I think it's very clear that you need that that, that sustainability. When Chancery came in as well... um. We'd obviously come off the back of a fail takeover by somebody who, who had a load of a load of uh, uh, dodgy, uh, alleged dodgy sort of dealings. And I think there was some sort of something that developed there as well, but I don't mm. want to say any of that on this uh, podcast. But we had a we had a fail takeover that was uh, was interesting, and yeah. Chancery came in, and at the start, I think his heart was in the perfect place for it. I think. He's still trying to be that. If you've ever met the man in person as well at like Owls in the Park mm. and things like that, he's very much hands... It's it's weird, right? He's very hands-on in terms of like... So hands-on to the point where I remember him coming around and telling the people who were like, you know, selling the shirts yeah. on the discounter rates. Yeah. He was trying to organise all of them even though they had their own management and team. So inside scoop... Yes, he is a micromanager. Yes. But his heart has been in the right place in times. And he's, he's, he reminds me of somebody who is stubborn and wants to make sure his hands on everything so it's stayed in the right direction. However, yeah. he hasn't had the experience to do that and he needed to step back and yeah. he needed to bring the right people in. He also needed to realise when he had the wrong people in that he needed to get rid of them because now it's got to a point of stubbornness and silence. Yeah. 
And, and I, f- I feel if it's going to continue in that route, maybe a sale is the best option. Unless you start talking to us and you start being transparent with us. Yeah. Genuinely transparent. Do more Zoom calls. They talk about this supporters thing. We obviously applied for that, didn't hear anything. But I'm also hearing that the people who actually applied for it, even though they're on the list, How they've won? not heard... It, they've, yeah, they've not had much develop, especially oh. when results have turned. I think the so, first one was January the 22nd and that's been it. I just... I am at a point now where I still... I still am very much wary of it could be a lot, it could be worse and you, you've got to be careful what you wish for, yeah. but it is becoming to a point of without transparency, I am going, if you aren't going to talk to us and we aren't going to hear more, and we, especially with the manager situation at yeah. the minute, if you are looking to sell the club, unless you've been advised not to and you've got a sale lined up, yeah. talk to us and tell us what the situation, rather I, than going, if the fans but, want me out, but, I'm going. But also tell us that you've got a sale lined up and that you're looking to go. I have a funny feeling his family might have turned around and said that I don't think he's doing his health any good, owning us, to be fair. Before we it's bought us... It's not doing us, my health any good, to be honest, Jeff yeah. Wednesday. It's not done for quite a few years. Before before we bought us and about two seasons in, he wasn't smoking as much. Now he changed smoking again, apparently. Um, Ale- you got her allegedly all that because I don't know. Yeah, I can't validate yeah. any of that and I'm, I'm not that ale- kind of it, podcast. It, it, it is allegedly, but I, I am... You you can't you gotta think when he had the cl- when I say when still got the club he was over every other couple of months to check how things are coming. I can't. I think his last time over possibly might have been February mm. last year. Well, obviously he, there's been a there's been there's been a a, a global situation. A, a global, yeah, global situation. So uh, that's the that's the reason for that. You could say, but I think. I would like to see. We're recording this on the Saturday of the uh, the Luton match as well, so that he might come out in the early weeks like, and talk I'd like about it. I like something on Monday or Wednesday just to say something. My bottom line is, if we don't start getting transparency, more regular basis, especially when the club are looking like we're heading for League One, I want to hear what is the contingency plan. Yep. What is the situ- You know, what is the situation actually going to be? If so, the contingency plan for going to League One. Yeah. And what is the current situation we are in financially? Yeah. In terms of, unless you are, unless there is an absolute reason you can't tell us that in terms of bringing players in, it doesn't look like you're bringing players in anyway. And they've been clearly brought in on certain assurances. If, Just be a bit more also, transparent with what those insurances are because you're giving them to players and there's still players coming to get loaned to the club, mm. but you're not telling the fans anything. But also, if he is selling the club, why would he want to bring a manager in? If he had to pay the compensation to sack that manager off. But also be honest with us yeah. and say that if, if you're not bringing a manager in and you keep him with Neil, tell us if the search is still ongoing. Until we are in a stable situation, you need to start talking to us a little bit more or appoint a manager and let them do the talking. Yeah. Like, you know, a club needs a representative. But at the minute, you've got a, somebody who's still a caretaker manager so the book stops with you, in my opinion. Yeah. So from, for Chance Area, from me, if we don't start getting more, some, some more trans, uh, transparency, um, I think he does need to look at potential options of... I don't, want him to, I don't want him to sell the club if he's willing to give it another go and start being transparent with us, mm. right? Because there is so many worse people he could sell it to. But it's getting to that stage now where we could be in a real dire situation if he doesn't start talking to us and, and he'll, you, he'll start to lose people who've actually given him a little bit of benefit of the doubt like me sometimes. And you're starting to get League One clubs get taken over. Sunderland got taken over the other week. Uh, there's a yeah. bid that's gone in for money, Ipswich. Money, even though you can't put a lot week. of money into it, yeah. there's, there's, pe- there's people that are getting exciting takeovers. Le- Le- so. League One are starting to get takeovers now. And that's the situation. One thing I will say, if, you, if he sells the club, do not just fire sale it and do not just go cut my losses and sell it to anybody. The do one you thing diligent. you can do, do not throw your toys out the pram and, and send it down. Think about the man you bought it off. And yes, he's a businessman, but be a businessman. And we talk about honor and pride and things like that. If you're going to sell it, make sure it's somebody that's not going to run it into the ground and admin it yeah. as well. Right. Because the, the EFL are clearly not picking up on quite a lot of that. So no. if your heart's not in it, sell it, but sell it to the right person. Or start talking to us and tell us what the situation actually is without yeah. saying that fans are being negative all the time. Because we know we've got that in our fan base. We're not stupid. But, but valid criticism from fans and genuine concern for our club isn't 
isn't the issue here. The issue no. is we've got a club heading to League One with no vision. Yeah. So, yeah. Interesting one. Let's go on to you guys now, because we've talked a lot today, and we are going to now talk about what you guys specifically asked us to talk about. It is the part of the show where we talk about the community topics. Our first community topic this week is from Justin Dono, who says, what happens when we are relegated, especially if we lose all the players out of contract? What's the future going to bring? And I've just realised the first one I've read out is going to keep the negative vibe of this uh, <laughs> this podcast going. So, mm. brief answers pretty much for this one. Honestly, we've, I don't know. Go on. I honestly well, for, don't know. F- for me... We've spoken about players being out of contract and what that could mean before. We have spoken about yep. that, but the relegation side of it is interesting. If we get relegated, I do feel like it's going to be a massive rebuild job. We're going to yeah. see everybody pretty much that's got those contracts running out go. Yeah. I think there's going to be a few we hang on to, if we can. I think the players that we, we need to... For me, just sign Urigidi out the lot of them at the minute because if we go down to League One, he's probably going to be one of our best players and give him some assurances in it, okay? Put and a relegation also, release clause in there so players have to pay quite a bit for him if he's going... If clubs have to pay quite a bit for him if he's going and if not, he'll be absolutely fire for us in League One. Yeah, and he could He could also, if he... if he With how he is now in the Championship in League One, you could see a lot of clubs look at him. And you could get money. And that's the one criticism I do have with Chan Siri. You had not made any money on player sales at all. Yeah. I think you made, you made 7.6 million, but you spent 40 million. And I have if seen we keep that- on this track, for me, it's damage limitation because it, yeah. the main question is about the out of contract players again. So, yo, Giddy. It is genuinely just focus on damage limitation in terms of the contracts. If you can get players to sign certain deals with assurances in there, relegation release clauses sound really ideal to me at the minute because Mm. they don't mean that... A lot of people think relegation release clauses mean that the player gets left on a free. That can mean that if you get relegated, they've got an option to go somewhere for free. What they usually mean in in some circumstances is that uh, they get a set, uh, relegation clause, which is probably not their full value, but is sort of three quarters of it or maybe half yeah. value. So a club can pay that and trigger that so the club still gets some finances. And that for me would be better than letting them go for free. Like yeah, relegation release clauses at half value, something like that. And that only happens if we get relegated, but at least we're recouping something on them. You know, on we're not. What, on, on what the future is going to bring, who knows? All we know is he's going to have to reach structure everything from ticket prices, shirt prices, the lot, because no one's going to want to pay that kind of money in League I tell you what, and I know this is weird saying this on a Wednesday podcast and you can call me a plastic all you want, I am not paying that money to go and watch this in League One after I was promised Premier League football at those prices for years. I'm not doing it. I'll still go to some matches because I'm a sucker, right? But I, I am not paying... Premier League prices for League One football that needs mm. to be sorted. Yeah, agree. And I know, I know, I know that's a big one. But the re- the reason I'm saying that is because I I can't think that you could charge it. Do you know what I mean? So I'm thinking. Obviously, I'm going to go to all the matches, and obviously, I'm 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 going to look I'm going to look into all of that when we go back. I'm just so glad I didn't buy one of those long term season tickets. Mm. Yeah. And I feel for the fans that have. Because it's not a great time at the minute anyway, and then you're not getting no. your money back, and it's you could have a you could have a oh five year season ticket or Premier League at the end of this, and you could oh, be ten, paid oh, all that money. Or someone you've got a ten year season ticket. Yeah, and you've got League One. Yep. Yeah, and um, we'll see what happens. So in theory, I mean, the, we don't know. I mean, the fight's not over, but it's it's. Uh, I need to see something more from this this squad, yeah. and I re- I really hope we see it soon. Thank you for your qu- question, though. Yeah, thank you. Uh, The next one, this one's a bit more fun. I am going to include fun ones as well. Uh, Not many of them get asked. It's usually usually very serious ones, which is cool because we can actually talk about those, but I do like the odd fun one. Favourite Sheffield Wednesday mascot, Ozzy or Barney? Ozzy. What's your poison? Ozzy, it's got to be Ozzy, hasn't it? It's got to be Ozzy. Sorry, Barney. But uh, Ozzy's the the icon for me. That's from uh, Jay uh, Billard Sorry, on... uh, YouTube. We're taking all the comments from the YouTube community section today, so if you aren't a subscriber, subscribe, and that is how you get your comment featured when you we put the post up every week. Okay, 
So we're going to talk about Chansiri briefly again from this comment from Rolo the Storm. A bit of a long one this one, so strap in. Chansiri and his I only think about the number one spot rubbish. Start at I only think about number one spot, so that's sort of top. Yeah. Top, is it top of the club, top of whatever. Starting to think he's referring to himself now, to be honest. Oh, maybe maybe he isn't. Maybe he's talking about getting the club to the top there. But anyway, if by some miracle we do stay up and we do you think we could reach playoffs next season? Do you think he'll inject loads of money into it and give it time, give it another crack? Because in his last conference, he literally said the only way to get out, get us out of it and get out of this league is by breaking financial fair play. So do we think he's going to do the reset? I I don't think he would. I don't think he would because I think it'd been too much of a hassle breaking FFP the first time round. And do you really want to go through all that again? That you can get out of this league without blowing lots of money now. There is a way of doing it, being smart how you do it. But if he thinks he can just... Unless you're Brentford and you've got years of money ball, I don't think there is. I genuinely don't. Look at look at it, though. Look at yeah. the teams that keep yo-yoing. Unless you have an absolute... That Huddersfield season was ridiculous. And, and let's be honest, at the time, it felt like Huddersfield were getting promoted at our detriment. Yeah. Okay? They had an absolute one flying season, and they're obviously back down in the, well, well, in the rabble the case, with us now. But. Well, if that's the case, scrap FFP, because it don't work. I've said this. I've said this for ages. I've said yeah. this for absolutely ages, mate. Get rid of FFP, because it doesn't work. If, you, if and, you're gonna own a football club and you can't put your own money in it, grab FFP. I think he needs. To, I do think he needs to give it another go. Yeah. But but break FFP in the same way that teams like Derby have broken the FFP and somehow managed to get away with it. Yeah. If you need to throw money at it, I don't. I don't want to see this club go into admin. Obviously, but I think we need to start that the ground start of it is using our our academy a little bit more and moneyballing it. There's two ways to do it. Throw FFP at it. You know, throw FFP out the window and chuck all the money at it possible and do it right with a proper team of advisors this time. Or... Moneyball it. Moneyball it. And start yeah. getting... like These players like Liam Shaw, do not let them go for 300k. Let them go for a million with add-ons. Yeah. You know? That's, yeah. that, oh, that's how you keep your players. But that is not what we have been doing. So if we start doing that, Mm. Then I think I don't think I think Chansiri will have another go if we stay up. Yeah. I think he's spoken about it, and if he is still here, I think he will ha- have another go at it. I think that's his in his mind. Yeah, but there is a big relegation looming over us at the minute, yeah. and that's the main issue. Last community topic for today: Does Chansiri want a coach, head coach, and not a manager? That's from Ian Tomlinson on the YouTube community well, tab too. I did a video about this and at the time I thought he did want a head coach because a head coach would just do the coaching side. That's all he does. And the rest of it is all down to the upper management lot, looking for players. This is who you get in. I think you had that a lot with Carlos in the sense where he just, he just has what players was there. And I think at the end of it, he was looking at getting his own players in. So when he started asking for certain players, I think that's where it went wrong. I think he does want a coach and not a manager, but it's very hard to go down the coach role because not, there's not many coaches that don't want to have full control over everything. And if he's not going to let him have full control over it, it's not going to work. I'm not opposed to us having a head coach if we bring in... No. A, like We were linked with Weber for the sporting director a few weeks back, if you remember. Yeah. If you bring in a good sporting director, I'm quite happy having a, a head coach model because it works. Well, it you do know pro- you do you work. do know where Weber's going, don't you? Where is he going? Celtic. I I I I don't know anymore. I don't know. <laughs> the yeah, apparently, Sheffield apparently Wednesday go to Celtic. <laughs> So the sporting director we relate with, if we talk, we get asked about a head coach, does he want a head coach and not a manager? And I say yes with a decent one. And the one we were linked with is going to the club that's just poached one of players. I've lost, I've lost it, I've lost it. He does want a head coach, but uh, we can't even keep our yuxes off Celtic, and apparently not even the sporting director we've been linked with now. So uh, 
I don't know what he's going to do on that one. Thank you for writing in, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, at least I've laughed now. I've laughed before we're going to talk about the upcoming fixtures because this week is another one. So I know I we've got Romero down on the next one. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> you're not going to like this <laughs> if you don't know what's coming up after Rotherham. So we've got Rotherham on Wednesday, 3rd of March. Yeah. Uh, quarter to eight kickoff. Lovely. Yep. We'll see if I cover that one, actually. I might cover the Saturday one because the Saturday one is going to be another reason for cringing because uh, it's time for a Lucas Yao hat trick. Oh, bye. See ya. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so we play red in a way. Oh, for God's sake. Now, remember, uh, right, my my brain is going, when did we sell Lucas Yao? Two seasons ago. Two seasons now. ago. Okay. So it wasn't this season, it was season, yeah. Lucas Yao is, uh, is arguably up there with the top in this championship now, which is just ridiculous to say. Uh, I'm throwing Rotherham out the way. I'm not predicting it. We're not talking about it. We're probably going to lose. I talked to a yeah. Rotherham fan when we submit some things, a bit of, bit of audio uh, bites, because he runs one of the things, and he was like, it's going to be a hell of a match in midweek. And I was like, you're right. Enjoy your 5-0, because <laughs> it's it's Wednesday at the minute. I can't see us getting much out of a Rotherham match. Yep. We don't have Atty you anymore, so we can't do that. Skipping over Rotherham, well done. You're going to do the first double on Sheffield Wednesday for... Have they ever done it? They probably have, but I like... They may have done. But like, like, I can't remember a double. Can you? Recently? No, actually. Not recently, no. no. Exactly. So congratulations on your first double. We're saying that before this even goes out. Reading, I also see us getting ripped apart. Because even if we get a lead, we've got no mentality. And I know this is negative. I mean, I know it's not what you want to hear. All right, Optimist James says three points here. We'll we'll sneak a win somewhere and manage to hold on. All right. Where? <laughs> I said Optimist James, but like Realist James and Honest, what's going to happen? We're going to get beaten by both of these sides. If we get beaten by both of these sides, you can call the season. Oh, we're done. It's done. Yeah. This Talking Wednesday podcast for the rest of the season is probably going to be like... Do you remember when we were good? We're gonna be Once. we're we're gonna have alcohol a lot. <laughs> you know the de- it's dirty co- To be honest, to be honest, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh no, no, we're not uh, even by that imaginary roadmap that the, we're apparently gonna follow. We we wouldn't even be out of lockdown before the end of the season, so uh, we can't actually go and have real life alcohol together for one of these podcasts. Okay. Upcoming matches. It's not looking great, guys. We will be back though next Sunday to talk about it yep. all. Those upcoming matches, thank you so much, guys, for the support. Thank you for hanging out with us every weekend at the minute. And, we apologise, uh, that is a bit depressing. Yeah, we do apologise, because to be honest, there's a lot, there's a few people obviously out there um, that aren't in the best mental space at the minute, and I feel that. I've, I've, yeah. I've felt that as well, um, in, gen- in general, sort of, not even just in, in uh, lockdown. So I know where you're at. Just want to say that we are supporting everybody who is out there that is feeling that. Definitely. Um, because it's been, because I also know that football is the only thing for a lot of people at the minute. So if you are feeling like the the run we are on is just the icing on the cake of, you know, just everything falling apart around you, you've got mates that just talk through microphones and we do, we do give a crap about people yeah. and there is people that give a crap out there and, even if it's not when they say it's going to be, there will eventually be a light at the end of the tunnel and we can at least have some pleasures in life again. Yeah. So take care of yourselves. Ho- hopefully next week we can be a little bit more positive, but we will... Uh, we will be, Unless we're not, we might be relying on your topics quite a little bit next week. So make sure you subscribe to the channel mm. and you look out for that post. Anything more interesting? Because you know what? You might be able to lift us up in the comments section next week, even if we have to talk about negative yeah. Okay, happenings. you're telling for next week for the comments, for like community topic, just make us laugh. Yeah, Make everyone laugh. Let's have a bit of positive and just put a smile on people's faces. Without tearing <laughs> other people down, though, because I know yes. some people have to jab at people to make do the funny. And I well, let, let, let's be clever with it. Yeah. But yes. That is all we've got for this week's Talking Wednesday. It's probably been one of our longest records, depending on yeah. what we do. It'll be a good... Uh, no, it's probably around. We've had a few hour 15s. I think that's what this will be around. 
So yeah. thank you very much, guys. Take care. We'll see you then. Uh, anything like uh, la- uh, l- I can't even speak. Left to say. Great end to this podcast. Anything left to say, my friend? Just the usual. Take care of yourself. Be safe. And remember, football will always break your heart. But as long as you've got friends and family around, you should be fine. And even if you've not, there's other things out there. Take yeah. care. We'll see you next week.